Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. Let's join Pastor Paul Carlson for today's message. Oh, yeah. Well, we've been doing a series, I don't know, a week or two. We've been talking about the name that is above every name, and that is the name of Jesus. And you know, in life, this name, this name of Jesus, I'll tell you what, in my life, it has been such a, a foundation of living, you know? It's, it's stuff that we pull out every day, and we use the name, you know? Just like you'd use the keys to your car to, to, to drive places on a daily basis, we use the name of Jesus to go places every day. You know, when trouble has come, more than many, many times when trouble has come and maybe I don't know how to formulate the right kind of prayer or whatever, you know, I don't have time to even think. I'll just say, Jesus, you know, and I'll tell you what, his name brings him on the scene. You know, I, 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 uh, my, my daughters, when they were younger, I, I tried to teach them some things about what to do if they were ever in a bad situation. I bought them mace and all that kind of stuff, you know, I just did, you know. I would have given them a gun to carry if they wanted, but they were kind of afraid of a gun. And, and well, Kara did go out and shoot with me once. And uh, she was a pretty, pretty good target shooter, I tell you what. But, but I tell you what, we did ingrain in them. If there's ever trouble, you call out the name of Jesus. You speak that name because there is power in that name. And it drives out devils. It drives out darkness. And that name... You know, I tell you what, we'll get you out of many scrapes. We've had times when, you know, when I've been driving, can you believe this? And there's been near accidents. And, you know, if I didn't call it, I can guarantee you from the passenger side, co-pilot to pilot, co-pilot to, to heaven, the name of Jesus was spoken. And I, I, I can tell you, there have been times when it looked like I was, I was Beretta or I was Rockford or I was one of these drivers that knew how to you know, just marry Andretti or something. But it wasn't me. Just God got us out of scrapes. God got us out of scrapes. Am I really dating myself when I refer to Beretta and Rockford? You know, I was thinking because James Garner just went to heaven, I hope, and, and uh, I was thinking about him. So, you know. Any case, the name of Jesus. And, and Peter, here in Acts 3.16, I'll just give you this as a reference. It says, his name through faith in his name made this man strong whom you now see and, 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 and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So Peter, again, demonstrated the power of God. And, and a, a, a crippled man was healed by what? By the name. By faith in the name. Do you have faith in the name today? Do you know that you can have faith in different things in life as a Christian? You can have faith in God for, for you know, salvation. And you can have faith in God for peace in your home. You can have faith in the name. I would say this. It would be good to develop faith in the name of Jesus. Again, I'm going to refer to this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. It says this, that the name of Jesus is above every name that can be named, whether in earth, heaven, or under the earth. Under the earth. What's under the earth? I mean, well, call hot, a digger's hotline before you dig under the earth because there could be wires under there. But he's talking about this. If you go down in the earth too far, he's talking about the powers of hell. Jesus' name is above all everything that can be named. Sometimes things will present themselves to you and, and they'll almost have a, a note of fear with them. But I'm telling you, whatever name presents itself to you, you can rest assured this, there is a name above it. And it is the name of Jesus. In Romans 10, I'm giving you a, a really speedy review and then I'm gonna get to what I wanna talk about this morning. In Romans 10, 13, it says, whoever calls upon the name the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And we brought this out one week that the word saved here is the word sozo. And, and sozo, if you don't know this, is a Greek word. And, and it's, it, the definition of sozo is this. It means deliverance, safety, preserver, preservation, healing, and soundness. So whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be healed, preserved, delivered, safe, be sound, 
Sound. Do you ever want soundness in your mind? I'll tell you what. There's soundness in your mind through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you hear this on TV, you know, as, as, as uh, commercials come on. Take this, you know, for soundness or for, for your mind, for memory and all this stuff. But I'm telling you what, there is a name that's above every name. And there is access to these blessings through that name. What I want to just touch on for just a few moments this morning is the name in your prayer life. The name in your prayer life. And if you will, I'm going to turn to John 16. John 16, verse 23 and 24. One man said this. He said, in fact, I'll tell you who the one man I'm talking about. It was Kenneth E. Hagin. This is what Kenneth E. Hagin said. He said, it is more important that a man or woman learn to pray than it is they get a college education. Now, he went on to qualify. He says, I think every man and woman should get a college education. But what I'm saying is knowing how to pray is even above it. Do you have people in your life when things are going, you know, bad or you're faced with a challenge that you call up and you say, will you pray? You just feel like they know how to pray. Do you, you know, isn't that true? I mean, I do. I remember one time I was going through something. I called the, the 1-800-SHAMBOCK line. I said, Shambach, pray for me. You guys don't, you don't know who she, R.W. Shambach, he's a fiery preacher out of Tyler, Texas, in heaven now. But, uh, but I tell you what, you know, we called people. Called Kenneth Copeland's line. We called Hagen's line because I wanted them to pray because I figured they know how to pray. You know what? There's power in your prayers. There's power in your prayers. And one thing I want to communicate to you today that'll help you is the power in your prayers is like this. It's unleashed when you have more faith in the name than you do in you. If you're looking at what you are and who you are to get your prayers answered, there'll be trouble. But if we can see that there's power in the name of Jesus, and that name has been given to us, I'll tell you what, our prayers are going to be making some differences. In John 16, verse 23, it says, Jesus is talking here, just so you know that. These are red-letter words. It says, and in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Now, why would he say that? Because he was talking to his disciples. And, and I mean, are you like me? Do you ever think back and think, wow, what would it be like to be one of the disciples? You know, not Andre Crouch and the disciples, but one of the disciples that walked with Jesus, you know? And, and there he was going in day and day. I mean, it's like going on a missions trip. You ever go on a missions trip? I mean, you get to know people on a missions trip. I've been on two missions trips with Aaron there, who we're going to pray for in the next service. I won't look at you anymore because I don't want to get emotional. But anyway, uh, uh, you get to know people when you go on a missions trip with them for a couple of weeks. But these people walked with Jesus day in, day out for three years. I would imagine if anything came up, they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, what are we going to do? But here he says this, in that day you'll ask me nothing. You'll ask, you're not going to be coming to me, Jesus, and bringing your prayer request. He says, in that day you'll ask me nothing, but verily I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Jesus opened the door. They knew Jesus was a man of prayer. They knew he got up in the morning and set himself aside from everything and he would pray to the Father. But I mean, this was, this was like blowing their minds. You're going to go to the Father and pray? Do you ever think like that? I mean, I, I, I can say I don't think like that a whole lot now, but I know people think like this. They think, can I go to the Father? Who am I to do that? You have a standing invitation. You have standing access with the Father, and it is through the name of Jesus. He says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you'll receive, that your joy may be full. Let me read the Living Bible. It says, at that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. You can go directly to the Father and ask him. And he'll give, it, give you what you ask for because you use my name. He says, you haven't tried this before, but begin right now. Ask using my name and you'll receive 
and your cup of joy will overflow. Wow, that hits me. That my cup of joy will, you know what? I like my cup of joy. I want it overflowing. You know that your cup of joy can overflow this morning? Wherever you're at. Whatever you're going through. Just simply by knowing the power that's at your disposal in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to give you this. Your cup of joy can overflow even before you see your need met. Even before you see your need. Some people have the thinking that, well, when I get everything in, a, in all my ducks in a row and I get a new car and my bills are paid, then my cup of joy will overflow. Well, your cup of joy is probably going to remain on empty if that's how you think. But I'm telling you this morning this, that you and I have entrance. Entrance before the Father. Entrance. You remember when Esther... Remember, remember Queen Esther? You remember she was going to go before the throne. And, and it was a big thing. Because if the king did not hold his scepter out to whoever approached the throne, you know, on their own, I mean, heads could roll. That was just the truth. And Esther, she prepared and prayed and, and just, just got, did everything she knew, had her people doing this stuff, and, and went before the throne and when she got into the, into the room, he held out his scepter. And he said, what, what do you want up to half the kingdom? What do you want? Jesus said this. He says, if you go, and I, you and I, who are we? Who knows? But Jesus said this. If we go before the Father in his name, what we ask, it'll be done. He says, that will fill your cup of joy. That'll fill it. So I could be facing a, a big need right now. So what do I do? You know, I, I would probably grab my wife, but even if, I, if she wasn't around, there's been times in my life I've been alone. I'd say this. I'd say, Father, I'm coming before you, not on my merit, but in the name of Jesus. And I bring this situation to you. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer moving on my behalf in Jesus' name. I walk away. Nothing's changed out here, but because I'm believing and I have faith in the name of Jesus and what that gives me, I walk away and I've left my problem there and I go away and I can have joy. I can have peace. I can have confidence and contentment even when the world is going crazy because I've gone before the throne. I've gone before the King of Kings and I've left, his, I've left my request with him. Can I read you a couple verses? I know where I'm pushing this morning, but it's okay. It says in John 14, this is just a few other things that, that bring it up. It says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, can you say anything? In my name, he says, I'll do it. Anything in my name, I'll do it. I'll give you this story, and we'll close with this today. There's a, a story, in, and it's in two of the Gospels. I'll, read, I'll start by reading this. In Matthew 8, 5, it says, When Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him. And, and uh, in this story in Romans, in, in Romans, in Matthew, it says that a centurion came to Jesus beseeching him. Now, this story is repeated in Luke. And in Luke, as it tells the story, it doesn't say that the centurion came to Jesus. It says that his friends came to, the, to Jesus on his behalf. Now, now, have you ever read things in the Bible and you go, well, how can that be? Because he told the story here and here it was the centurion and he told, this guy told the story and, and here it was his friends. You know, you ever have things like that? These are the kind of things that, that some theological schools spend an eternity debating. What I have found is when questions like that come up, you know, I go back to what I know and I put things on the shelf and as you press into God over time, things get shown to you. He'll show you answers. 
So in this particular case, we have the centurion coming to Jesus on behalf of his servant. In another story, in another uh, recollection of it, in Luke's gospel, we find that there were some friends that came on his behalf. Well, I was reading one day, in a, of all things, a, a commentary, and, and, and it said this, it says that in Bible days, there was a different understanding of authority than what we might have today. And in Bible days, it, it, in the days of Jesus, in, in the life and times and customs of his day, when people went before someone on behalf of another, it was the same. Can you say the same? It was the same as if that person went themselves. So probably the account that was right by our thinking was Luke's gospel where it says that he sent people to go to Jesus on his behalf. But when, when Matthew, was it Matthew or John that recorded it? When the other disciple or writer of a gospel recorded it, in his mind he recorded the centurion went himself because in that day the thinking was that there was no difference. Can you say no difference? So what am I telling you this morning? I'm telling you this, that when you go to the Father in Jesus' name, it's like Jesus himself is doing it. When you lay hands on the sick in Jesus' name, it's as if Jesus himself is doing the praying. Is that good or what? I'm telling you what, that will change your prayer life if you'll grab hold of that. John 16, 26, I lied, I'm giving you one more. It says this, And in that day you shall, uh, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. And the Living Bible says, Then will you present your petitions over my signature. Over my signature. And I won't need to ask the Father to grant you these requests. He says, You'll present your petitions over my signature. So what did Jesus do? He gave us the, the check, and he says, here it is. I'm writing my signature on it. You fill in the amount. That's pretty cool. I don't do that. <laughs> In case you're wondering. Jesus did that to us. How wild is that? That's one of those jaw droppers. That's too good to be true. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's what Jesus said. Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. To partner with this ministry or for any additional information, please visit libertychristiancenter.org.